Hello again. I'm on uh, section 5.3, which is finding volume using the shell method. I'm on page 534, and I want to do problem 36 with you. So I'll read the instructions. Find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by the graphs of the equations about the indicated line. Sketch the region and representative rectangle. Okay, and the equations are y equals x and y equals x squared. The line to revolve around is y equals 2. So, let's see. Here I've written those down. If I was going to sketch that, uh, y equals x looks like that. y equals x squared looks like that. Somehow I'm kind of expecting that to be relevant that they cross 0 and 1. That's actually the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate, which makes it easy. Now where's the line y equals 2? I guess that's, I drew this a little bit big. y equals 2 is down there. And I am looking to revolve around this curve, right? So that's the issue. I'm going to be trying to use if, if I were cutting like this, that would be the washer method, right? It's a perpendicular cut. I'm going to be using the shell method, so my cut is like that. What's my representative rectangle? So here's my graph, right? I have to work on getting this radius and this height. So here's my representative rectangle. Uh, now, notice that I'm cutting this direction, so this is going to be an integral in the y direction, and I'm cutting from 0 to 1, and so I'm going to have to try to describe this height and this height, right, this is, that's the height, in terms of y. Well, what's that in terms of y? This is the line y equals x squared, so this line is really, say, x equals square root of y, and this is x equals y. So. How do I get the different distance between those two? My height is actually square root y minus y. And for values less than 1, say uh, a quarter, you, you see that this is a positive number. Uh, and incidentally, at 0 and 1, the height is 0. OK, then I've got my 2 pi times my radius. Now, what is that radius there? Well, the radius at some height y is actually the distance between 2 and y, with 2 bigger, so that's 2 minus y. So that's my integral. So I'm integrating from 0 to 1. I guess I should pull out my 2 pi. That's a constant. Uh, then I'll go ahead and distribute. So I have a 2 root y, or I'll write it as 2 y to the 1 half. I get a 2 times a negative y, that gets me negative 2y. I get a negative y times a root y, that's negative y to the 3 halves. Negative y times a y is y squared. Okay, so integrating that mess, let's see what I've got. Here I get y to the 3 halves, uh, and the coefficient is now 4 thirds. Here I get y squared, here I get y to the 5 halves, and I've got to put in a negative 2 fifths. Here I get y to the third, and I put in a 1 third, evaluating from 0 to 1. This is really nice to evaluate. Plugging in 0 here, of course, gets me out exactly 0, so I just have to plug in the positive value 1, so that's 4 thirds minus 1 minus 2 fifths plus 1 third. I guess 15 is the best common denominator I have there. So let's see. Here I have 20 15 minus 15 15 minus 6 15 plus 5 15 so let's see, that's down to 5, negative 1, plus 4. So 4 fifteenths times 2 is 8 fifteenths pi, if I did my mental math correctly there. There you have it.